Yes, this video it is about Chandrayaan 3 mission. So many students they have doubt regarding how this mission works. So yes, today we are going to see the result of this Chandrayaan 3 mission. So we are going to understand whether this mission is a failure or a success. And we are going to get result by evening 6 pm. So actually once the satellite has launched from the earth's surface, it will be entered into the orbits of earth. And later on it will be entered into the lunar orbit by using the transfer orbit. So after entering into this lunar orbit, so the moving of this satellite will be happen in the elliptical orbits. And there are different levels. So here we have to decrease the height so that we are going for deboosting. And finally what happened? So after the satellite is reaching 100 kilometers from the surface of the moon, so we are going for the landing. So here First of all, the satellite will be divided into two parts. So lander will be divided from the satellite. And this lander will be revolving around this lunar orbit. And finally, it will be scanning where it have to go for soft landing. Because like Earth also, on the moon also, we are having different topography. So based on that scanning, okay, so they will be scanning the different spots. And they will be go for safe landing. So this is the lander Vikram and after safe landing on the surface of the moon what happened this lander will be opened and rover will be coming outside. So that thing that you can see here. So lander is opening and here the rover will be coming outside. So this is the Pragna rover. And this rover will be doing the scientific analysis. It will be collecting the samples and it will be sending back the data to Earth. Okay, so this is the Chandrayaan 3 and we are going to see this last step today. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this video, we are going to see current affairs of 23rd August 2023. So these are the list of the topics that we are going to discuss in this video. So first one it is about Chandrayaan 3 lander all set for touchdown today. So if we are going to have a soft landing on the moon surface, then this will be a great success for India, especially for ISRO. So here you have to know some facts regarding this Vikram. So Vikram is lander and by today evening we are going to see the result of this Chandrayaan 3 and we have to know what are the objectives of this Chandrayaan 3 and even before this Chandrayaan 3 is to launch a Chandrayaan 2. So what are the differences between this Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 you have to know and this is your homework students. So here in this video, I am going to cover current affairs, which is not only important from UPSC, but even for other state public service examinations also. Okay, so even if you are preparing for other competitive examinations, you can follow Rathor's IS Academy. Okay, and the next topic it is about BRICS is a platform for global South says Modi. So already we know that BRICS summit is going on in South Africa that started yesterday. So we are going to see it is going to end it on 24th August. So till now we do not have any highlights of this summit. So once summit is done, so we are going to get the highlights. There we are going to have a detailed discussion. But why I selected this topic because of this word that is global south. So you have to understand what is this global south and you have to see the map of this global south also. And next topic is inflation. Inflation pressures may linger, but food prices to ease soon, says Ministry. So here in our economy, we are facing inflation. So what is this inflation? Inflation is nothing but whenever there is rise of prices of goods and services in the market, that condition is called as inflation. So in this inflation, we are having different types. Normally, we have three types of inflation. So first one is demand push inflation and uh, demand pull inflation, cost push inflation and built in inflation. So why there is increased price of goods and services? So first one is because of increasing of demand. 
So whenever demand is increased and supply is decreased, automatically the price will be increased. And next one is whenever there is increased cost of production, that means whenever there is increased cost of raw materials, automatically there will be increased price of the goods. And next one is built in because of change in the lifestyle. For example, if the people who is consuming only pulses, but because of increasing salary, when that person who is moving towards eating non-veg means automatically the non-veg price will be increased. Right. So these are the three types of inflation. And here you have to see what are the causes of inflation. So apart from these causes, you have to see what is the role of government of India and as well as RBI to control this inflation. So this part is very important from your mains. And next topic is no bulwark for Pakistan's minorities. So actually Pakistan it is facing another new crisis now. So it is communal violence. So Pakistan is facing communal violence. So it is between two communities. So which are those communities? Christians versus Muslims. And this issue it is regarding blasphemy. So here you are supposed to know about what is this blasphemy. So this is very important. And next one is easing credit flow. So what is this article it is about? So already in our yesterday's lecture we studied about RBI's pilot project. And RBI want to come up with frictionless credit that is easy credit mechanism. It is focusing on easy credit mechanism. So here we have to see what are the benefits and what are the outcomes, how it is going to help fulfill small, medium and micro enterprises. So this is the idea of this article. And this one is about the failure of Luna 25. So what is this Luna 25? So Luna 25 is Russia's Russia's lunar mission. Actually, there was one thought like, so this Chandrayaan 3 and Luna 25, they are going to land on the South Pole on the same day. But finally, before landing, the crash of this Luna 25 happened. So here you have to see Luna 25 and there is a high possibility of getting question regarding this Luna 25 in your state service examinations also. And next topic is on protecting the biodiversity of the Northeast. So here you have to focus on what is the meaning of biodiversity. So please let me know in the comment box what is the meaning of biodiversity and how many biodiversity hotspots and how many biodiversity and how many biodiversity hotspots are present in India. So please let me know that thing and these are the topics now we are going to see in this video. So please don't skip the video. So watch from starting to end so that you will be getting lot of insights. And now let us see the Hindu, Hindu paper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu. The first topic it is about the BRICS is a platform for Global South says Modi. So first of all, let us see this topic which is interesting and today's entire newspaper is covered with this Chandrayaan 3 itself. So Chandrayaan 3 lander all set to touch down today. So this is our rocket which launches this Chandrayaan. So Chandrayaan satellite is present here, right? So actually, if you see this infographic which is showing about the key dates of this Chandrayaan 3 mission. So we launched this mission on July 14th and later on. So here on August 17th landed separates from propulsion module and one speciality here is in this Chandrayaan 3 we use this propulsion module. So because of this use of this propulsion module we reduce the cost of Chandrayaan by around 300 crore rupees. So this is the fact when you compare with that of this Luna 25 mission. So now let us see. Some detailed analysis regarding this Chandrayaan 3 mission. Okay. So, what is the context? So, four years after, that means, so 
So we launched this Chandrayaan 2 mission four years back. And actually, so this Chandrayaan 2 was a failure mission, right? So after its predecessor crashed on the lunar surface, so actually we aimed for soft landing. We aimed for soft landing on the moon surface. But this soft landing is not possible with this Chandrayaan 2. And actually what happened, the connection between this Chandrayaan 2 and ISRO had been lost. So because of this, it is a failure mission. So finally, we came with this Chandrayaan 3 mission and we launched this Chandrayaan 3 mission. And we are going to see whether the soft landing is going to happen or not. So we can see that soft landing will going to happen on today evening okay, by 6 p.m. So if you see some more important details, it says that around 5.45 p.m. the mission operation complex at ISRO Telemetry Tracking and Command Network that is ISTRAC. So actually satellites will be launching by the ISRO. But if you see tracking of that satellite, everything will be done by this ISTRAC. Okay, tracking everything will be done by this ISTRAC. So ISTRAC will initiate the power power descent of the lander module so here this lander module will be descended by this track by 545 and we will be having 15 minutes of critical time so at that time even scientists of ISRO they will not have the like they will be very much anxious they will be very much tensed so that will be a high time for those people and even for the people of India also because if you see the news uh, analysis or the news yesterday in the different news channels so many people they are offering pujas to make this mission successful so if you see some facts regarding this Chandrayaan 3 mission so it is India's third lunar mission and it's a second attempt we are focusing on soft landing on the moon surface that too on south pole that too on far side that too on far side so please let me know what is a far side and what is the reason for the dark side of moon so in yesterday's lecture i explained that so i'm asking question now it will be helpful for your revision and if you're talking about what are the objectives of this mission so we are focusing on safe and soft landing on the surface of moon and next one is we are focusing to demonstrate rover on the moon and even to conduct in situ scientific experiments so after from this lander so rover will be coming out right and this lower will be collecting the samples on the lunar surface and it will be going for research there itself that is scientific experiments will be done on site itself so these are the some important objectives so if you are focusing on what are the features of this chandrayaan 3 so we have lander so lander name is called as vikram and we have rover rover is called as pragnan so here chandrayaan 3 remain the same time as chandrayaan 2 mission so how we launch the same uh, chandrayaan 2 mission so in the same way we are launching this chandrayaan 3 also so we have some scientific payloads on lander and because of this here we can understand or we can study the different aspects of lunar environment and these payloads which will be helpful uh, for studying of especially lunar quakes that means on the earth we will be having earthquakes like right? that is the shaking of the earth so in the same way on the moon surface also there are quakes they are called as lunar quakes so this it is going to study lunar quakes and even thermal properties of the lunar surface and also changes in the plasma near the surface how the changes is happening on the surface of moon and they are going to measure accurate distance between the earth and the moon so these are the some important features of this chandrayaan 3 and i want to give you one main question to practice so already this question appeared in 2016 so the question here is discuss india's achievements in the field of space science and technology so till now what are the achievements that we had in this space because now we are moving towards new space era so in this new space era india should be forward like other countries so because of this you have to know till now what are the achievements which are done by india in the space sector and you have to see how application of this technology 
has helped India in its socio-economic development. That means India is successful in launching of rockets, right? Launching of number of satellites. So we have Earth observation satellite. We have remote sensing satellites, right? So because of the satellites, what are the uses? So what are the applications? So by using that satellite or data information that we are getting from the satellite, so how it helped for the socio-economic development? So that is the demand of the question. So I hope you understand this, right? So try to write answer and the answer should not be more than 150 words. So if possible, write answer in the comment box and get evaluated by the team members. And now let us move on to this paper and see the next article. So BRICS is a platform for global South says Modi. So here we have to focus on this word that is global South. So here let us try to see this uh, topic in detail and let us move back to this Hindu notes. So what is the context here? Yes, context is BRIC summit is going on in South Africa. So in South Africa, BRIC summit is going on. So this BRIC summit which became a platform which used by our Prime Minister to use this term called as Global South. And in this summit, they are going to address what are the challenges which are faced by this global south. So they are going to address the challenges. These challenges are faced by this global south. So here you have to understand this concept called as what is this global south. So global south is nothing but the countries which are less developed and developing countries less developed, developing and underdeveloped countries, they comes under the part of this global south. So this global south, it is not based on the geographical thing. That means if you see this is as a globe, so this is equator, this is the northern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere. Correct? So equator is divided in the globe into two parts, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So global south is nothing but it is not like the countries which are present only in the southern hemisphere but even Latin America which is present in the northern hemisphere which is part of this global south. So this global south is a concept. It is dealing with the developing, less developed and least developed countries. So this thing that you have to remember it is not based on geography at all. And actually this global south is present in continents like Africa, Asia and even some parts of Latin America comes under this global south. Is it clear? So what are the challenges which are faced by this global south? Normally these less developed or least developed countries or developing countries facing issues like food insecurity, poverty, hunger, sanitation, so and so. So please let me know which are the problems or challenges faced by these countries of global south. Please let me know. Don't worry. Okay. Don't forget about this. And even if you don't know, leave it in the next class. We are going to discuss that. So here we are facing problems like poverty, income inequality and living conditions are also very much challenging here compared to that of global north. So normally this global north contains developed countries. So developed countries or rich countries which are part of this global north. And like the global south. And the global north is richer nations that are located mostly in North America, Europe and even in some parts of Oceania also. So actually if you see geographically this Oceania which is present in the southern hemisphere, correct? But some nations of this Oceania, they are rich and developed. So because of this, they come into the part of this global north. So this is about this topic. And now let us move back to this Hindu paper. Here you can see one article. It is about inflation pressures may linger but food prices to ease soon. So here if you see this infographic, it says that recently finance ministry released a issue. Okay, released a review regarding the month of July. It said that there is increased prices. Increased prices because of two important reasons. So first one is global reasons and next one is domestic reasons. Global reasons means the reasons which are happening 
outside India because in this globalized era in this globalized era in this 21st century every country is interconnected so if one country is facing problem means that problem will be having impact on another country because of this interconnectedness because of this globalized era so here because of this globalized uh, or globalized era or global disruptions and because of this domestic factors we are facing some issues that are leading to this inflation so if you see this global uncertainties according to fao food price index here food inflation has been increased okay this is the first thing and second one is because of termination of black black sea grain deal or black sea grain initiative also that led to increasing of price of wheat and as the sunflower oil so again the sunflower oil price may be increased soon and if you say domestic disruptions because of white fly disease in kola district of karnataka and especially because of this white fly disease it affected the prote production of tomato tomato production is affected because of this white fly disease in kola district of karnataka and next one is because of unequal rainfalls or we can see inadequate rainfall inadequate rainfall because of el nino that led to decreased rainfall and that also affected the production of tomatoes so this is second important reason and next one is tur dal price also spiked because of deficient production okay so these are the domestic reasons and next one is global reasons because of this we are seeing there is inflation so here you have to focus on what is this black sea grain deal so here you can expect a question regarding this black sea deal okay black sea grain initiative why it had been stopped by russia okay so you have to know some facts regarding this and now let us see this topic in detail and as i said this topic is important from international relations which comes under your gs paper too so here you have to see which are the ports under this agreement and here you have to see which are the countries sharing boundary with the black sea okay so if you see here context says that india's inflation woes they are not over it so still now also in the month of august also there is price rise there is spike in the food prices is seen and here our finance ministry said that because of food basket price that led to the inflation overall so this is the overall idea here and it this article which also said about what are the global reasons and what are the domestic reasons for the inflation so one of the global reason here is because of termination termination means end end of black sea grain initiative and because of this end of black sea grain initiative there is no proper exports of wheat and as well as sunflower oil so actually we will be getting wheat and as well as sunflower oil from ukraine and russia so what happened because of this russia ukraine issue so russia came up with occupying of major important ports of ukraine and because of that there is a stall in the exports but because of increasing of food prices because of increasing of food prices and because of issue of food security because many of this european countries depended upon this ukraine and as well russia for the wheat and even we are getting sunflower oil from this russia and ukraine itself to india so what happened so whenever there is a stopping of exports from this russia ukraine ports then what happened earlier which are the countries depended on this ukraine now they will be facing this food insecurity so because of this finally they came with agreement to export this wheat and sunflower oil but finally here recently what happened russia came with ending of that black sea initiative okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see what is this black sea grain initiative so actually what happened this ports in ukraine they are very important for the food for the food 
and as well as for the fertilizer for the food and fertilizer exports it is very important and actually this initiative which brokered between russia and ukraine by united nations and turkey so united nations and turkey came up with this brokering of agreement that is between russia and ukraine to open the ports to open three important seaports first one is first important thing under this initiative is they will allow exports of grains and as well as other food stuff and even fertilizer including ammonia and even they are focusing on sunflower oil also sunflower oil grains food stuff fertilizer and the three important ukraine ports were chornomorsk odessa and zuzi zuni so these are the three important ports and we have to see that right so here you can see those three important ports the first one is chornomorsk and next one is odessa and zuni so use use so these are the three important ports and here this is black sea so this is blasky this is russia and this is ukraine so russia which mainly occupied this region and and these three ports were under control of russia and at that time there was no exports but because of this uh, black sea grain initiative so russia accepted to open this ports for the exports of grains sunflower oil and fertilizers and let us see another map of black sea so this is black sea and other important ports of ukraine were the first one is here novo zerne sevastopol blakava yalta and as well as uh, this is fedosia and krch so actually this part is occupied by russia in year 2014 so this is crimea this part is crimea so this crimea had been occupied by russia in 2014 why russia occupied the crimea because of this poles that is especially sevastopol sevastopol it is one important port so it is all weather port so russia did not have the proper access to the sea route so because of this especially for the sea route so russia occupied this crimea in year 2014 so earlier it was under the part of ukraine so these are the three ports that are present here so which were under control of russia okay so this is black sea and i hope you can see here we have sea of marmara and please let me know so which is the strait which is connecting the sea of marmara and black sea and one more thing you have to see here is one more thing you have to see here is so which are the country sharing boundary with this black sea so in this let us say in the clockwise manner so here we have ukraine here we have russia and here we have turkey and bulgaria and romania so these are the countries sharing boundary with this black sea so this is at most important from your prelims point of view so in 2023 prelims there was one question regarding so which of the following countries sharing boundary with ukraine because of russia ukraine issue so every in every year paper you can get a question regarding the boundary states so in 2022 upsc asked which are the states having the boundary with afghanistan right so especially black sea caspian sea and mediterranean sea so you have to see the states or uh, the countries to sharing boundary so that will be an expected question okay so this is about this black sea map and now let us move back and let us go to this hindu newspaper and you can leave the city page in city page you will be not getting much important articles so if there is any important article will be there i will be let you know okay and in the states page also there is nothing much art any important articles are there so most of the articles that i found they were political articles so here you can see jdu accuses bjp led center trying to disturb bihar caste survey so if you see this matter so entire matter is political issue so we have to focus on what is this caste survey so here you have to focus on what is this caste based survey 
whether state government has the power to conduct this caste based survey or not so this thing that you have to see and this is your homework because already i discussed this topic in our earlier lecture so if you are following our rathore science academy you might be knowing that and if you move forward in this page you can see nasa esa to support isro during moon landing today so as you all know that we are going to have landing right that is vikram lander which is going to land on the moon surface so why this article is important because in 2023 there was one question very interesting question prelims like so which of the following countries have their own space agency so the answer in that question is japan so in this way you have to see nasa it is of usa and esa it is of european union okay so these are the space agencies of usa and european union so that is the thing that you have to remember here and if you move on in this editorial page so this topic it is about festering wounds so this article which is talking about issue in manipur so as you all know that legislative assembly session has been delayed in manipur so even governor she received intimation from this council of minister headed by cm but she didn't came up with giving any notification regarding the summoning of session so because of this it is one delay so if session is not going to happen by september 2nd in manipur means we can see there will be constitutional machinery breakdown and even there is delay in appointment of first chief justice of high court also already we studied the constitutional provisions which are relating to this legislative assembly in our yesterday's lecture so if you have not been watched yesterday's lecture so please watch that so that you will be getting great insights regarding this topic and next topic is a strong case to restore section 84 of rp act so here you have to focus on one important judgment that is lily thomas lily thomas versus union of india 2013 so here in your lakshmi kant there is separate topic regarding representation of people's act of 1950 and 1951 so please open that topic and do revise that topic that's it and if you move forward here you can see there are two articles so first one it is about easing credit flow so this article which is focusing on rbi's platform for loan approvals will help small borrowers so we are going to see this topic in detail and next one is no bull walk for pakistan's minority so this article which is talking about this blasphemy issue so it is example of communal violence so if you are writing any answer regarding communal violence you can also cite this issue between christians versus muslims in pakistan so now let us see the detail analysis of these two topics so first we are going to see about this blasphemy so actually what is the issue in pakistan so in pakistan there is a issue which is going on violence which is going on between muslims and christians so muslims versus christians is going on in pakistan so this is the issue of this blasphemy so pakistan has again witnessed violent black clash that is regarding the allegations of blasphemy so actually i think one or one and a half year or two years back there was a issue regarding asia bb issue that is also regarding this blasphemy and once again there were violence erupted because of this blasphemy in pakistan so the recent incident which we saw like mob mob went on the rampage in the in the area like jaranwala fasilabad region so there was violence erupted and in this violence so muslims they went for setting up of fire to churches and they started attacking the homes of christian community and they also came up with vandalizing the local assistant commissioner's office also so because of this what happened it is undermining the fundamental rights of the people and even we can see it is a failure of the country to uphold fundamental duty of safeguarding minorities and marginalized groups so actually if you see here every country the or every government 
have responsibility like it has to safeguard the fundamental duties of the people it have to safeguard the minorities but here because of this incidents which are going on even because of attack which is done on the assistant commissioner office that means on the government itself people they came up with the conducting of violence that means we can say there is breakdown of law and order and here we can say it is a failure of the government it is a failure of the government in upholding the fundamental duty that is safeguarding the minorities and marginalized groups so here we have to see what is this blasphemy so blasphemy is nothing but it is an insult it is nothing but it is an insult which shows contempt which shows disrespect and even there is a lack of reverence concerning any di any deity or any object which we are feeling that which is sacred for example so this bottle it is sacred to me for example if this bottle is sacred to me so if i say that if any person who is coming and insulting my bottle means so i will be shouting at him or i will be doing something at so that act which comes under this blasphemy so what can be done so here many countries or many governments are thinking that we have to come up with the laws to deal with this blasphemy so if you are talking about blasphemy in indian context for example so we have ipc so in ipc some sections are dealing with this blasphemy but recently government came up with the three bills to repeal ipc crpc and iac so regarding this blasphemy so what is this ipc will do so we don't know exactly what is the future of blasphemy laws in india okay so blasphemy law we need and is need to prohibit the religious criticism so because of this communal violence so we can't ensure the social fabric of the society and we can't maintain inclusive society so if your dream it is to have an inclusive society and we need to have a good social fabric means yes we need this type of blasphemy laws and in a free and democratic society there should be no incitement or there should be no dissent that should be seen and we can go for like so there will be a small fault line which is present between the hate speech and as well as blasphemy so we need to have a clear cut line between this hate speech and blasphemy okay so this is about this what can be done in this blasphemy and if you move on the next topic it is about rbi's pilot program regarding frictionless credit to the people so this article which is talking about public tech platform for frictionless credit so what is the issue here so here you have to know about what is this platform and here you have to know about what are the possible benefits and possible outcomes so if you see here rbi that is reserve bank of india which is planning to establish this public tech platform for frictionless credit and through this platform here rbi is focusing that we have to is the flow of credit and it should be very much easy for the small borrowers even so the platform which is which is one of the one stop digital learning digital clearing house so it is a one stop digital clearing house and it is also providing the credit related information so that what happen it will be accelerating the loan approval and even dispersal process significantly that means if you are having a one stop solution like what is the data so whether that person is having the enough balance or not so enough balance is maintaining by that person or not or if there are any negatives out there so they have to display there so that there will be the fast dispersal of loans will be happen so that it will be very much helpful for small scale borrowers because the small scale borrowers normally go to the money lenders and they will be borrowing the money from this money lenders at a higher rate of interest so because of this that will also lead to the debt trap of that person so to avoid this we have to ensure the easy loan availability so what is this platform actually so this platform developed by rbi innovation hub and it is an end to end digital platform right and it is having open application programming interfaces so that we can connect plug and play model easily and this model which is going to provide seamless providing of information 
in one place to facilitate the credit. That means through this process we can have the easy credit availability. So what are the possible outcomes and benefits? So first one is it will enhance credit portfolio management because we will be having data in one place in one okay one stop solution that we have so that what happens so data consolidation will be very much helpful and even we can go for risk management or risk assessment and based on that efficient credit can be approved easily and next one is improved access to the credit so because of the accurate information is present in that so and so platform so it will support informed and it will be also focusing on expansion of credit availability so that here borrowers they will be getting some benefits and next one needs even it will also helpful for reducing operational cost so if you want to get a loan if you are going to bank so they will be asking to get the documents and they are focusing on the paperwork so if you want to get all those papers it will be like like it will be costly it will be around like 2000 to 3000 rupees will be taken for the processing itself so if you are having a digital platform it will be like a paperless so that operational cost will be also decreased and even efficiency will be also very high right so these are the possible benefits and outcomes regarding this platform so I want to give you one question and this question already appeared in 2016. So this question is about Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana. So Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana is necessary for bringing unbanked to the institutional finance fold. Do you agree with this for financial inclusion of the poorer section of Indian society? Give arguments to justify your opinion. So this question is asking about PMJDY. So in introduction, you can write about what is this Pradhan Mantri Jan Dan Yojana. And here you have to see whether this scheme which helped for financial inclusion or not. So this is the first question that you have to address. And second one is you have to give arguments to justify your opinion. If S means, so what are the arguments? If no means, what are the arguments? So this is the demand of the question. So try to write answer and answer should not be more than 250 words and you can take like 13 to 14 minutes initially to write one answer of 250 words. So try to write answer. So try to start writing answer. So many of them say that after completing the syllabus I will be starting the answer writing but it is not a right approach. So I said everything about this thing right. So I try to implement answer writing. So at least what is the content which is present in your brain, try to keep it on a paper so that you can improve it obviously. And now let us move back to the paper. In this text and context, in today's paper, everything it is about Chandrayaan. So it is about rover that you can see here, right? So mission life is one lunar day that is 14 Earth days. Okay, so that is very important and you have to remember that 14 Earth days. So in this text and context, yeah, one minute. What happened? Yeah, in this text and context, there is one article. It is regarding understanding the failure of Luna Twenty Five. So here you have to understand what is this lunar 25. So you may get a question like, so recently lunar 25 is seen in news, so what it is regarding to or which country launched in this? So in this way you can expect a question regarding this lunar 25. And next topic it is about biodiversity of northeast. That is on protecting, on protecting the biodiversity of northeast. So you have to see these two articles. So I will be having a good amount of content to explain these two topics. So let us see that. So the context says that on August 11th, Roscomos. So Roscomos is nothing but Russian. It is Russian Space Agency. So Roscomos is nothing but Russian Space Agency 
launched this Luna 25 spacecraft by using this Soyuz 2 rocket. So this Soyuz 2 rocket is also very important from your state service examination point of view. So this Luna 25 uh, spacecraft which is used launched by using this Soyuz 2 rocket. So on August 20 here Rose Comer stated that this Luna 25 had suffered a glitch and it crashed on the moon surface. So because of this, this mission, it is a failure mission. So why Russia came up with this exploration that you have to know. So after 47 years, Russia came back to this lunar exploration with this Luna 25. So why? Because Russia want to restore its standing in the space exploration. To make its place in the space exploration again, Russia came up with this lunar lunar exploration and in order to examine the soil composition and even dust particles and surface water detection so this Luna 25 is lighter and does not have a rover so actually the important aim of this mission it is to examine this soil composition and it is also focusing on this dust particles and also it is focusing on the surface water detection and if you're talking about the difference between the Luna 25 and Chandrayaan 3 is in Chandrayaan 3 we have rover but in this Luna 25 there is no rover. And this one is it is having 8 payloads on Russian lander and this payloads they are useful for detecting of sur surface water and they will go for analyzing of soil composition and even it is helpful for the analyzing the dust particles in the polar exosphere so these are the some important highlights of this luna 25 but this is a failure mission and if you move forward next topic it is about protecting the biodiversity of northeast so already in this northeast which is getting good amount of rainfall from this monsoons right and even we will be having lot of hills mountains here present and we can see there is a very rich biodiversity because of presence of the lush green forest and in this northeast area also we can see there are number of biosphere reserves number of uh, national parks which are present in this area also right so here we have to see what are the issues regarding the maintaining of biodiversity in northeast and this topic is at most important from your environment and ecology and this topic is important from your mains and from prelims so from prelims point of view what you have to focus you have to focus on important national parks wildlife sanctuaries and biodiversity reserves and even you have to see important rivers which are flowing here and its tributaries okay and even important hills So all these are very important thing from your prelims point of view and this is your homework. And now let us move forward. So if you see context it says that so especially now present government is focusing on tourism and it is focusing on coming up with developmental projects, construction projects and infrastructure development etc. Because of this here whenever we are focusing on tourism that will create revenue and that will also create employment opportunities but on another hand there will be the negative impacts that is seen on our environment so here we are focusing on this negative impact that is seen on environment so because of our government is focusing on tourism to improve employment opportunities to get the revenue on another side we are having the environmental destruction so this is the context of this article so recently in one important case that is cleanliness of umaim lake versus state of meghalaya so here there is one more prelims fact so you can get umaim lake is seen in news recently in which state it is located in meghalaya so please make a note of this so cleanliness of Umaim Lake versus state of Meghalaya 2023. So in this case, your chief justice mainly said that in the absence of any other employment opportunities and in the name of promoting tourism, the natural beauty of state should not be destroyed. That means 
so in the name of development in the name of infrastructure projects in the name of tourism so there is no right on destructing the environment so this is the thing which clearly stated by chief justice in this umaim lake versus state of meghalaya 2023 and if you move forward if you say this north eastern part of our country it is also called as a green belt region of our country because we are having abundant natural resources like we have oil we have natural gas we have minerals and fresh water and even this north eastern india which comes into the part of even hot spots okay, that is biodiversity hot spots for example garo kasi jaintia hills and brahmaputra valley they are some of the important hot spots that is biodiversity hot spot they are very much rich in uh, wildlife flora and fauna right so through this uh, through this north east industrially which is very much backward because because of the topography because of the mountains because of the rivers because of the tributaries because of the forest so actually we did not much focused on industries in this north eastern region and we can see there is a good forest amount which is present in the north eastern region but whatever the existing industries are there so these existing industries they are causing problems to the environment in this region so this is one of cause of concern and if you move forward so north eastern india which lies in the ecologically fragile so which is present in the ecologically fragile and biologically rich region and because of this it may also prone to climatic changes it may also prone to climatic changes and which because it is located in the trans boundary river basins that means so many of the rivers which will be flowing in this area if you are going for development projects or if you are going for the industries etc here so they will be releasing the waste so because of this it will be leading to the increasing of pollution in the rivers and because of this it will be having negative impact on the wildlife which is present there and even flora and fauna so this is the thing which mainly said here and one important problem that is seen in the north east is shifting cultivation shifting cultivation by the tribal people and because of mining because of quarrying and because of deforestation also flora and fauna they are under the threat now so what can be done in this present situation so what is the need the need here is the state government and central governments state governments and central governments they need to develop infrastructure and they have to generate revenue and create employment in a sustainable policies so whenever they are going for development projects they have to think whether it is sustainable or not so we have to go for enough environment impact assessment so enough environment impact assessment is very much necessary before giving the clearance for that so and so project and next one is we have act fast for northeast policy and in this act fast for northeast policy we are focusing on enhancing our economy economy that too through trade and commerce to trade and commerce we are focusing on enhancing our economy so in the same way in this act fast for northeast policy we have to even focus on environment development our environment sustainability is also very much important so we have to focus on even environment sustainability so this is the thing that you can focus on and next one here is government should consider the case of creating a uniform environmental legislation so even though government is saying that we are going to come up with this policy this thing so we need an effective law so without this law or without the act so we can't ensure the protection of our environment so we need efficient laws that need to cater environmental issues at all levels of governance so this is about this crux of this article and i hope it is very much clear right and now let us move back to our hindu page so in this text and context this article is not much important and if you move on to this news page so here you can see this article that is us court stays rana's extradition 
and 26 by 11 terror attack. So this 26 by 11 terror attack is important from internal security point of view. There you have to see what are the causes of this attack. So what is the impact? And here you have to even think about what is the mandate of police forces. And one more important subtopic which is lies here is extradition. So you have to see what is the meaning of this extradition. So is there any extradition treaty which signed by other countries with India or not? So please let me know about this extradition. And if you move forward here you can see one article that is causing floods is a terrorist offence in law proposed to replace Indian penal code. So already we know that government came up with a bill to replace this IPC that is Indian penal code. So which is that bill? That is Bharatiya Nya Sanhita bill. So this bill which is saying one interesting thing. So that is the section 1116 of this bill says that who is a terrorist. So according to the section 111 it is saying about the definition of terrorist. So according to this section 111 who is a terrorist means that is a person who develops, who manufactures, possesses, acquires, transports, supplies or uses weapons, explosive or releases nuclear, radiological and other dangerous substance which causes fire, floods or explosions. That means the person who is causing floods are also called as terrorist according to this new definition. Okay, so this is the thing that you have to remember here. That's it. And if you move on here, you can see one article which is regarding NRHC. NHRC issues notice over attack on family. So this NHRC is nothing but National Human Rights Commission. So in your Lakshmi Khan, there is separate chapter regarding this National Human Rights Commission and as well as State Human Rights Commission. So please go to that topic. So that is very important from your prelims point of view. And if you move on the most of these articles or political articles, there is no need to worry about those articles at all. And here you can see center to buy 521 lakhs of lakhs tons of rice this Karif season. So here you have to see the different seasons. Seasons in India. So this is the part of your geography. So we have Kharif season. We have Ravi season. And we have Ziyad. And you have to see what is the time period. And you have to see which crops comes under which season. So already many times UPC ask her questions regarding which crops comes under the which season. So that is very important and this is your homework. And if you move forward in this world page you can see one more important topic. That is Japan to release water from Fukushima nuclear plant. So this Fukushima that I can say it is one of the nuclear disaster that country never forgets. So this disaster which happened because of tsunami. As you know that Japan it is an island nation. It is surrounded by water entirely. But what happened? Already this Japan which is present on ring of fire. So because of this it is more susceptible to earthquakes. So because of earthquake that led to tsunami. And because of this tsunami that led to this nuclear disaster in this Fukushima nuclear plant. So till now the water had been present in this Fukushima nuclear plant. Now Japan government want to release this waste water which is trapped in this Fukushima nuclear plant into the nearby water body. So this is one issue. And here you have to see what is this Fukushima nuclear plant disaster. And you have to see the location of this nuclear plant on this map of Japan. Okay, is it clear? And here you can see one more article that is rescuer save all eight per people from cable car dangling above Kenyan in Pakistan. 
So here you have to see this word what is Kenyon. So yesterday I gave you homework regarding what is George. Right. So this is also a term which is related to your geography. And please let me know what is this Kenyon. And even in your 11th class in CRT you can see Grand Kenyon. So what is the meaning of this Kenyon? Please let me know. And in the business page. You can see one article which is important here. It is about GDP growth to accelerate to 8.5 percentage in first quarter. It is a thing which said by ICRA. So ICRA it is a credit rating agency of India. So ICRA came up with a forecast of our GDP. It said that we are going to have economic growth of 8.5 percentage. So we have to wait and see what happens. And here you have to see which which are the credit rating agencies in the world which are famous and in India. So please let me know the credit rating agencies in India and world which are very much famous. So these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by the I'm concluding. So if you really like this video hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Rathor's IS Academy. And please do share this video to your friends also. So from tomorrow onwards, we are thinking that we are going to have live session at 9 a.m. So please join the live session so that I will be clearing your doubts also. Thank you so much.